If you need a break, take a break and enjoy it. Because guess what? When you take a break, because I'm going to take a break regardless, yeah. and I'm going to be hating myself the whole time, and then I'm only going to take half a break because the whole time I'm going to be in my head like, I should be doing something, I should be doing something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Trying to be easier on myself. Like, relax. If you want a fucking break, take a break, enjoy it. And then when you get back, I'm going to be feel so much more refreshed than I would have if I would have been like beating myself up the whole time about it. Yeah. You know? What's up guys, my name is Brazil and welcome to the podcast. I finally launched my Patreon, which is uh, something I'm excited about. You know, I've been doing this podcast for about a year where I interview all kinds of people in the industry, choreographers, filmmakers, music producers, comedians, and, uh, and I just share the journey of what it's like to becoming a professional creator from people that are actually doing it. So if you like that and you like these interviews and you wanna support the show, please click the link below, join the Patreon. You'll get early access to some episodes and some exclusive behind the scenes work and some Q and A's with some people as well. It's really a lot of value. So if you're into that and you wanna support the show, thank you so much. But in either case, even if you don't join the Patreon, there are tons of interviews on this channel on YouTube full of value. So please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, turn on the notifications so you actually see the new episodes as they come out. I have full new interviews every week on Monday and some clips in between that. So thank you so much. I appreciate all the support. Today I have a very special guest. We have world renowned choreographer, dancer, influencer, creator, brand owner, Nicole Kirkland. <laughs> What's up, homie? How you doing? What an intro. What's up? I'm doing good. How are you? I am loving the LA rain. I can't lie, I love rain and I'm so happy that it's finally coming to LA because it's never here and I only get to see it when I travel. So Right, and it was like real rains this time too. Like we Yeah, it was coming down. Oh my God, we sat on, on the on the porch for like an hour just watching it. Like <sighs> no phones, just like wow. It's such beautiful. a beautiful thing and I think we always uh, take for granted what's closest to us, mm -hmm. right? Like when we, I lived in other parts of the country, you know, rain can be like a every day yeah exactly so you can be bothered by it mm -hmm. right like over here sometimes we're bothered by how hot it is yeah right? exactly but we're like yes it's raining i know <laughs> no one knows how to drive that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I, I don't go out and drive when it's raining i just if you can just stay home and feel yeah. it oh that rain in the window feeling i love rehearsing when it's raining outside Ooh. yeah that's literally the best so um because I don't know, something about like raining outside and then being able to create within that weather. It's just, yes. I don't know, it brings out, I think it has this water. It brings out the emotion, you know? I feel you. Water makes me feel really good too. Yeah. Yeah, it's cozy. It mm -hmm. makes you want to be inside creative. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so where'd you, you grow it. up? Bay Area. Does it rain a lot over there? Uh, no, no. Well, okay, so San Francisco is always foggy. Um, right. I would go up to San Francisco a lot to dance. Um, but not a lot of rain. San Jose That's is interesting because doesn't rain come from the fog? Well, isn't fog I mean, clouds misty, that are low? Yeah, it's like misty, yeah. but like, I don't know. It didn't really rain. I mean, it obviously rains more in San Francisco than it does in San Jose. Right. But, um, and like living in San Jose mostly, it's like sunshine. But I like going up to San Francisco because it was always like gloomy, like gloomy overcast. Not too much rain, but gloomy and overcast. Yeah, they yeah. have this nice oh, uh, mirror woods out there. Have you been there? Mirror woods? Yeah, no. yeah. It's like some national forest. The or Redwood Forest? Thing. Yeah, Redwood Forest. Yeah, okay. yeah, type of thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like it. I like that California has so many beautiful nature spots. Yeah. We were just talking about that. You we went to were. San Diego recently, right? How was that? I just that? went to San Diego and it's wild out there. I, I really didn't know that they like partied like that. <laughs> 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 I stayed at gas in gas lamp area. I don't even know. It's like, I don't know the area. Okay. And everyone was just going crazy. It was actually really fun. I don't really do stuff like that often. So being a part of that was cool. You know, it turns out people party everywhere. People do party right? everywhere. Right? Like I've, I've been to parties with like mayors of towns and stuff and mm. it didn't feel much different than any other party i've been to like mm. sometimes people just like to get down just like to get down just <laughs> have drinks and talk about life and yeah yeah or sometimes more <laughs> or whatever. sometimes more i was gonna say i saw yeah. this one girl she was losing it she was walking she lost her top just titties out yeah that was interesting I haven't seen that in a while hashtag free the nip <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure if she knew it was out um oh really she little, was just a little oh, gone wow. yeah it was one of those like where's my friend you know type oh no drunken episode so i, I haven't seen okay. that in a while yeah i asked her she said she was before she started crying and running off into the other the other way so <laughs> Jeez. uh what was your childhood like my childhood yeah um my childhood so i have one sister so it was just me and Natalie, um, my little sister growing up. And uh, childhood was 
Oh my God, it's such a weird, I don't think I've ever been asked that question, like in that way, how was your childhood? Um, it was good, mom, dad, sister. Uh, I went to regular school, I went to a private school for a little bit, and then I changed because my parents couldn't afford it anymore. And then um, Was there a I noticeable started... difference between private school and public school? Or you didn't go there long enough to feel it? Honestly, I only went to private school up to fifth grade. Okay. Um, so, you know, yeah, kind of blurry. Like a kid at yeah, that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for me, I didn't feel that big of a difference. Um, it felt more open. The public school, like, layout felt a little bit more open. Like, the, my private school was, like, behind a church because it's, like, a Catholic school. Yeah. It's, it. like, behind a church, kind of hidden. more restrictive. Yeah, yeah, more, yeah. So the public school felt a little bit more open. Um, yeah. But it was cool. Started dancing at, what, two? And then um, I stopped when I was 12, money issues again. And then I started up um, when I could pay for it on when I was 18. So from 12 so, to 18, you didn't dance because no. your family couldn't okay, afford it? Okay, I did like dance team at my high school, but it wasn't, but that's not the same. It wasn't the same. It, I just did, you know, to have a community yeah. of high schoolers, you know. To the untrained eye, they think, oh, yeah, that's dance. Yeah, that's but no, like, real no. dance training is a whole Literally thing. Literally a double turn was like the hardest thing we did. But how did your parents feel about you dancing? Did they want you to pursue a regular career? My dad did not want me to pursue dance as a regular career. My mom just kind of wanted me to do what I wanted to do, but she was still a little skeptical as well. My dad wanted me to go to college. He wanted me to, I mean, my dad comes from like poor Cuban family. So he did accounting because he knew it was like security driven, security, security, security. So that's what my dad wanted me to do. Security driven job, like accounting, yeah. sitting at a desk. Your dad's Cuban? Yeah. I, I, for, I think I forgot that. Yeah. 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 yeah my stepdad's Cuban as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. my dad was the only one that was um, born here out of his two brothers and two sisters. So um, he was like the baby. And, you know, he he's the only one that grew up in America. So he's like, okay, I'm getting he that accounting job. wanted you to have job. that yes. sense of security. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no. So I went to college for, what, three years, got my, business, got my AA in business and liberal arts. And then... I said, That's peace out, uh, associate's degree in business okay. liberalized. My dad was like, you at least need to get this out the way. So if you, cause my, okay. <laughs> my dad still to this day when I come home, like, well, okay. Not maybe in the past year, just like the past two years, but every year before that, he was like, so you ready to come home? Like right. he, he literally He's says, like, are you done with your face? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He literally thinks that I was going to come home like with my tail between my legs, like, okay, I'm ready to do a normal job. Like dance is not working out. And it, it worked out. He's still shocked to this day that it worked out. But, um, right. but yeah, was he wanted me to go Was there a defining moment where you said, no dad, I'm doing dancing? Or was that like always part of the conversation? It was kind of always part of the conversation. But I remember that time when like my mom and my dad like sat me down and were like, okay, you got your AA. Um, you got your three years out the way for college. Like we want to give you your blessing to go to LA. But it was still more of like a, we're giving your blessing so you can shut the hell up about it and come back home and go to college. Like that's right. like my dad's mentality. My mom, I think was like, let's try it out. You know, she's all optimistic. But um, my dad was very much like, get this out the way so she can stop talking about it and she can come back home and uh, do what she needs to do with, you know, college and stuff like that and get a regular And that's job. understandable because especially the way our parents grew up back in the day, didn't have a lot of role models of people being professional dancers and being well paid. Well, let's being be real, social media has <clears throat> yeah well, let's be real social media has changed everything already didn't mean to cut you off but no, yes ahead, yeah. even social media like yeah. it wasn't around back then so i feel like the opportunity even with dance wasn't even as big like even when know, even so. when you were <laughs> starting yeah exactly exactly so sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you what were you saying no i forgot i mean, okay. I mean we're, we're basically on the same thing right yeah. that like oh your parents it's not like they didn't want you to dance that they didn't know that that was a viable option they exactly. wanted the best for you mm -hmm. right yeah that's Everything that comes from my dad's mouth is because he wants what's best for me. Like, even when he's fearful, when he's mad, like, everything is just he wants, he just wants the best for me. So, like, understanding that, you know, as I'm older, too, like, getting to understand that more, it's it's been a blessing. And I'm glad that he has put the somewhat of fear into me. So, I, I feel like it's made me very, like, business, like, savvy, very smart with my money, stuff like that, because he has instilled that into me. But I just, like, kind of took that and, like just opened up a little bit a yeah. little more free with it so, so you can like, still I be can, your liberal artist I, yes yeah, yeah. exactly but you I can have be my the mindset self. yeah and that has helped me a lot so thank you dad did you ever have a regular job oh yeah what i got my jobs? first job was when i was 15 i needed that money you feel me um i worked at a dance studio when i was 15 for my my friend's mother so she paid me in like dance clothes okay and then when i got 16 i mean i at one point i was working like Okay, so at 16, I worked at like Hollister, Tilly's. I danced, I taught dance to like little kids. Um, and then at one point I was like 
literally working like three jobs. I think I was working Tilly. Yeah, Tilly's Hollister and teaching dance all at the same time. Plus, I was on Chapka's dance, which if you know anything about the Bay, San Jose is south of the Bay. Shut out the Greg. is all the way at the top. So me and my sister were driving like an hour and a half. Wow. Some nights, like twice, three times a week to do that. Plus working in college and it was crazy. Yeah. When was the first time you got a good check from dance that you could show your dad and be like, hey, this oh, is God. real? Probably when I... Um, Probably when I booked Prince, I think that was like my first check that was like decent, you know, because like my so my parents paid for like my rent for one month. They ended up paying for two, but they were like, we're only paying your rent for one month. So because I was I came out here and I was I was like, oh, my God, I spent all my money in a second, like very classic L.A. And um, I was like, I have no money. My parents were like, you have one month to get your shit together. One month. And I did. I got a job and stuff. Um, I actually was working at Starbucks. And then, you know, month two came around. They're like, okay, we see that you're working. We're going to pay you this. But that's it. So I was working at Starbucks for like six months, 4.30 a.m. <sighs> shift. It was so I didn't rough. know you worked at Starbucks. Wow. Was that around oh. the time that I met you when you did Federal? Like Probably. way back when? Yeah, it must have been. Yeah. yeah it must have been. 4 3 a.m. shifts. Like so ridiculous. But then I booked Prince. Let's talk about that. And Wait that was like my So you first. were working at Starbucks. Yeah. And then you booked as a barista. A job with Prince. The Prince, Prince. The Prince. Tell me about that. How'd that come about? Oh, what was that gosh. process? Um, okay, so <laughs> I just got into some drama about this on social media a couple a little bit ago too but um so okay long story short uh me and Antoine Troop we were like kind of like choreography partners mm -hmm. so um we so Prince reached out to at her at the time her name was Danielle mm -hmm. and uh wanted um he wanted her to basically dance um a video to his latest song that was going to come out so she could be in the music video. Right. So um Danielle hit me up and was like, "Hey, will you come and choreograph this for me? I just need a choreographer to put some stuff together." And I was like, "Sure." We literally like met at the met at a gym and um I choreographed this thing and she's like, "Okay, I'm going to make a video of it and I'll send it to I'll send it to him and I'll let you know like what he says." I was like, cool you know like whatever i didn't think anything yeah. of it It was just like this is for her you know so then like a couple days later she calls me she's like yo prince saw the video he wants me in it but he also loved the choreography so he, choreography so he wants you to do the video and i was like Lit! like I, I remember just wow. like getting that phone call and like that was like my first not only was it a job but it was choreography yeah so i was just like i was so ecstatic but i didn't quit my job obviously you know a music video is a one-time thing so um I did the music video and then, oh my God, the music video. Music video was quite, quite a experience for my first job in LA. Um, it was very, very messy. Everything was just a mess, but um, I ended up getting, we got it together and then um, Prince loved it. So he continued working with me and Antoine kind of separately um, of Danielle. Danielle was doing like her music career and uh, me and Antoine were just choreographing. We did his band. We did his Arsenio uh, Hall performance. We did his Essence Festival performance. We flew out to uh, Minneapolis a couple times to like work with wow. him and stuff. And we had so many plans, so many plans for the future with what he wanted to do. I mean, he literally flew us out to Minneapolis one time just to talk about a show that he was putting together and it, um you know when when he died like it was so it was so sad because it was like i felt like he was like looking out for me you know it was like someone was looking out for me and um to have that kind of ripped from for me was really sad um but you know what like it showed me what i'm capable of and it kind of gave me that confidence boost that i'm actually good at what i do you know because like not having a mentor not having someone to kind of like guide you through the industry like it can be kind of rough. Like you're like, am I actually really good? I don't have someone telling me like, hey, you're good. And Prince did that to me. He was like, I still remember his moments sometimes where he was just like, yo, that was so good, you know, in his Prince way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it was kind of gave me that confidence boost to like go and start teaching classes. And then that whole thing with my career just took off as well. But he kind of gave me that confidence that I was missing. Wow. What was he that like was in person? <laughs> what was, no, no, this is so interesting. Yeah. Um, what was his vibe like? Every, every Prince interview, any Prince conversation you hear about people talking about him is exact. It's so accurate. There is this one story that I love so, so, so much. So we, we me and Antoine ended up getting really close to like his band, right? Because mm -hmm. we were like also helping his band kind of like do like, oh, sorry. Did you ever like work trumpet. with those Australian twins that were in yeah, the band? Yeah, Nandy and Maya. Yeah, 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 yeah Nandy yeah. and Maya. They were so cute. I still talk to them sometimes randomly. I met them yeah. at a bonfire. 
oh, years lit. ago. Yeah, yeah, randomly. they're so yeah. cool, right? Uh-huh. Um, there's this really funny story where um, it was me and Antoine and like a couple of band members, and we were sitting on a bench, and there was two people standing up, and one of the band members was standing here, and I don't remember. He said something to me. I don't remember what it was, but he said something and like kind of whispered into us like he didn't want anyone to hear. And he was like, and we were like, oh, yeah. And then it was so funny because Prince ended up sitting down like like a like he's a freaking ghost. Like he just sat down and he this guy had no idea who was sitting there. And it was so funny because like we looked and we were like, we, we all saw Prince, but he didn't see him. And so he turns around. He's like, what are you guys looking at? And he got so scared. And he goes, you scared me. And Prince goes, you scared me. Like, it was hilarious because, like, the way he moves around is just so, like, mystical. Like, he's just mm. a mystical guy. And, like, you never know where he's going to pop up and where he's going to be. And it's just, I don't know. It's it's like working with a magician, like, all the time. I can imagine. Yeah. Did he ever make you pancakes, like, in the Chappelle Show skit? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, did, did you go did to Lake Minnetonka? <laughs> Lake Minnetonka. Um, no, but he did run out, like, he did like rent out his whole place one time. I think we went and saw a movie. He like rented on a movie theater one time for us. Yeah, he did really cool shit. It he, was he created it was nice vibes. Nice vibes for sure. Yeah. Was he demanding work wise? Um, the way he worked was very much like um, no one really has like assigned jobs. It's kind of like this is what I want, make it happen, and he just has a team of people that makes it happen. So like sometimes me and Antoine were like creative directors and choreographers and also pr- like producing some of the stuff like not you know not everything that a producer and creative director and choreographer all these things it's kind of like everyone just comes together just, to make it happen and everyone's yeah. everyone's job you know what i mean yeah just contribute however you contribute can contribute however you can yeah, yeah. so that's kind of how he worked and it was it, w- it was interesting especially to do his live shows because even the way he does his live shows it's just he's just jamming so like we and hearing music live versus on a record like on a track is so different so like i remember when we were choreographing um essence festival we really really had to be smart with how we um choreograph the intros because it was like what song is he going to do next we didn't have a set track list it was however he felt on that stage was how he was going to go so we were just backstage like waiting like okay well you know um, he would change 1999 is supposed yeah like 1999 is supposed to be next but like he might change it we don't know so we would sit there and listen sometimes the intros kind of sound the same and we're in a you know we were at the superdome in new orleans so it was like it was just it was kind of stressful <laughs> but it was fun it was fun it was an experience i you know i'll never obviously i'll never be able to get back so just having that memory wow i yeah. never heard of somebody changing a set list the night of right because if you have a choreographed routine of, to song of. three yeah, <laughs> yeah right he's not even yeah. ahead of time he's no. not like a new set list no before. So here you go no it's we can like we can talk for show five minutes. has started yeah show is going and he's and like he's, flipping orders mm-hmm, and you have to figure it out yeah he's jamming he, he he moves how he moves you know that's, it was that's, cool. That must have been a fun muscle to stretch, right? Oh, to just yeah. That means that you can't be in the back backstage messing around on your phone because no. you know you're not in this next number. You're, no. Everybody you has to be, to be paying attention. Tune. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, what did your uh, what was the phone call like when you got that Prince drop? When you called your parents? I was <sighs> well. When I actually got the phone call from Danielle, I was in my little <laughs> I was in my little one bedroom apartment with my roommate. Well, my roommate wasn't there, but I was in the living room of the one bedroom. You know, I remember that place. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember just getting the phone call. I don't remember where. I think I was on my way to like a rehearsal or something, and she was just like he loved it and i just remember like falling to the floor like oh my god like i just booked a job and not only is that a choreography like for prince like it was just really really it was really cool wow yeah kind of just like unlocked that memory not unlocked the memory i remember it but like reconnected just kind of unlocked the feeling again yeah and when you called your parents what was that were oh, they like man i think my mom was just ecstatic like she was just and my dad, my dad just always is just like, what? Like my dad's, my dad always says what whenever like I do something that I get something cool. He's always like, what? Like he can't believe it. Like he just laughs. And my mom, you know, she gets all emotional. So what a heck yeah. of a first job. No, I know. Right. I know. And I, did people treat you weird because you were a new choreographer getting a major thing? I have every, I've, everything in my career so far, every time something great happens to me, it is followed always by negativity i don't know what it is about my career but there is always every time something amazing happens it is always followed by negativity and um with that instance and this was my first thing it was like it just whispers everywhere like who the hell is nicole and why is she doing this why did she get this she's she doesn't even she doesn't even done this blah blah, blah. and i get it i get it to a degree 
But at the same time, I was like so hyped to just book that. And it was my first thing. I was just so happy. It was just like, oh, wait, people don't, people aren't ha like, people don't like this, you know? They're so, not happy for you. They're not yeah. happy for me. Yeah. And again, I understand because now that I'm older and <laughs> I've been out here for nine years, you know, <clears throat> like I understand like if some new kid just came in with no experience and booked something like yeah. Janet Jackson choreography, it would be like, what? You know, but people are special. You know, some people are special. I feel like I'm special. I feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of, you know, not just me. I'm not the only one. Yeah, There's, yeah. But there are special people in this industry and in this world that can just do things that other people maybe can't, you know, and there are things that other people could do that I can't, you know, but I think that job was really, um, it was made for me. I think that experience was made for me. So I, mean, I don't yeah. know how that sounds, but no. that's just how I, how I feel. <laughs> Straight up. And yeah. I can only imagine, you know, because on one hand, you want to celebrate and be happy that you got this joyous, this incredible thing. Yeah. But then you try to celebrate it with people in the industry and then they're like sad for you being like, happy. Sir. Yeah. Right. It's almost like you have to protect your happiness. Always. Oh, I've learned that right? in a very hard way. Yeah. You have to have like your own private celebrations, mm -hmm. internal mm -hmm. celebrations. Otherwise, yeah. you allow other people to step on it. And also yeah. as like, you know, with such a stressful industry and such a high and low industry like Hollywood, you know, I, I think there's also a sense of um, uh, being humble about things too, you know, and, you know, especially if some a friend or someone that's close to me, you know, maybe they're going through a hard time. Like we all go through ups and downs in this industry. And like, I think as me, it's like, I shouldn't be over there screaming that in your face that I just did this, you know, when someone's going through a hard time, like I can kind of, like you said, I can take that moment and kind of, no one can take that moment away from me, you know, since, and I think just taking that and if someone's going through a hard time or something like that, I don't have to like also rub it in other people's faces as well. Like I can just, I can just celebrate how I want and keep it pushing, you know? That's a great perspective to have. So I think a lot of times it's easy for us to take things personally. Yeah. When somebody's mean to us. Yeah. Right. But then I think about it. Well, have, have there been times where I've been mean to people? Of course. Right. And it's like, I'm yeah, human. well, and like, well, am I a mean person? No, it's just that that day I wasn't in the best state. Mm -hmm. I could have gotten into an argument with my dad or whatever. Maybe mm -hmm. I was getting over a breakup. You don't know what could have been. Or I feel depressed that day, right? Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of reasons why sometimes we're not at our best. Yeah, for sure. And I think the more I see myself. Yeah. Go through that. I think the more uh, grace I offer other people. It doesn't mean I let people walk all over me, but if somebody's acting off, I think okay, well, it's probably something. Yes. Yeah. On their don't side. think things. Yeah. Per don't take things personally. Easier said than done. Yeah. But important to do. Yeah. To try. Yeah. To try. Yeah. We're all trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It's very, very accurate. Yeah. I remember the first big job I got. It's not nearly as big as Prince, but when I did my first skate video, mm -hmm. it was the biggest skate video you could do. Like, yeah. The first one I did was for the team that won gold at the X Games. Oh, and for normally, you, that's like, whoa. Yeah, that's, that's like crazy. The, the pinnacle yeah. of that world, right? Mm -hmm. But normally that's like something that people do at the end of their careers is right. direct a video for that team. Mm -hmm. I did that when I was like 19, 20. Oh, wow. And so Very everybody young. was hating on me because like, who does he think who he is? Hell? This yeah. little kid doing this, mm -hmm. you know? Know? and it was like okay well i guess i just have to just make it my own thing yeah and maybe again like yeah. you were obviously chosen for that moment you know and mm -hmm. you had something special to offer so it is what and there's it is. no timeline for creativity no somebody doesn't have to be doing this for 20 years to deserve a major job well and that's something about prince that i loved is and he even told us he liked working with younger people because i was 21 at the time mm. um he liked working with younger people because he said that we have like what did he use? Did he say the word jaded? We haven't been jaded yet. And it's true. Younger people are the future. They are the ones with the fresh ideas. They haven't been jaded by experiences in life and, and failures over and over again. You know, it's like they're fresh. They're new. They got new eyes. And that's and Prince always said that. That's why he liked surrounding himself with I could see younger, that. younger people, you know? Yeah, we have less barriers to our ideas yeah i remember when i first moved to possible. la it was just like yeah i got nothing yeah, to lose exactly I'll try anything now literally I, I have so many reasons why something might not work mm -hmm. that sometimes i don't try fully but i'm like wait a minute i need mm -hmm. to go back to just trying stuff exactly yeah there's a certain fearless mm -hmm. level of a young fearlessness artist. for sure for yeah. sure yeah i like seeing the the new generation come up like there's a few people that i've been watching on instagram that are starting like their own little clothing lines and their own little businesses just, like, out of their bedrooms just like shit shipping clothes Fearless. out you know and just being like yeah buy my t-shirt i got merch Woo. <laughs> and i'm just like go get them go get them yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 because why not 
Yeah, I know. And you know what? It's it's um, going off what we were talking about also before. It's like so, you know, when you're young and you're like, I can do anything and you have that and then you get older and mm. you kind of look at the new generation and it's like, I've always told myself when after going through that experience with Prince and kind of like people, I feel like people not really welcoming me with that with that job, mm -hmm. I always was like, I'm not gonna be that when I get older. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like when I'm that age, I'm not gonna look at the new generation and be like, what are these kids doing? You know, like I'm going to make sure that, I'm gonna make sure that I also adapt to the times, but younger people have something to offer. They yes. really do. And seeing that way, working with Prince and seeing the, the, uh, the, the job that he gave me and the opportunity he gave me, it's like, I like to see that too. And I like to actually, that's part of my career is taking on younger people and, and transforming them into stars too. So it's like, yeah, that's kind know. of the whole point of learning anything is so you can teach somebody else, right? Yeah. Every time I have a breakthrough, I want to share it with people. I remember me and you, I've always shared books with you, right? Yes. Like whenever, you know, I, I hear some new Tony Robbins thing, Tony I invite Robbins. you over. Tony Robbins, hi baby. Oh, Razzy. Okay. Okay. It's okay. I literally love dogs and it's so me hard too. for me to, you know, it's hard for me not to give you attention right now, Brad. Yeah. He's like, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay? Yeah. Like I love sharing things that I'm learning. Yeah. You know, and I think it also helps me learn something more if I teach it. Yes. I'm sure there's that way for you for dancing, right? Totally. The more you teach dancing, then you have to apply the thing that you're teaching. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I actually like teaching in general, you have to actually break things down like things that might even just come naturally to you you actually have to break it down and understand like well why is my body moving this way or whatever you know whatever you're teaching yeah. it's like you actually have to get down to like the technical stuff of it and it's actually like kind of reteaches yourself as well of like oh. yeah creating your own recipe because yeah. some people it's like you're cooking blind like you i just, I just put a pinch of this but what's yeah. a pinch is it yeah. a teaspoon uh -huh. is it a tablespoon yeah right? it's what it is the actually actual make formula? you better mm -hmm. yeah and knowing that can make you a better like creator you know like whatever we're talking about but yeah i would say that's a yeah. great advice for anybody out there if there's yeah. something that you're already doing right write it down yeah learn like break down why you're doing that right yeah exactly and see how you can apply that to other things mm -hmm. yeah what do you want to okay. be remembered for what do I want to be remembered for? I just want to be remembered, um, I think, as a person, I want to be remembered for never giving up and being an inspiration to people that are going through hard times. Um, I've been told that from a couple people lately, and it's kind of cool that like people can look to me when they're going through something rough and they're like, well, if Nicole can get through that or Nicole can do that, you know, my whole life is on social media. And it's like, if people can look at me and, and feel that, like, that's really dope. So I think as a person, um, giving that inspiration to be like, you can do anything, you know, and push through it. And then as a dancer and creator, I think just like, I just want when I'm gone at my funeral, like I just want like videos to play that are from my work that people can just enjoy and I made them feel something, you know, like that's like my biggest goal when I think about dance. And it's like, especially with what I do, it's all not just, this kind of sounds bad, but it's like all about me and my vision, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I do stuff with artists and stuff like that. But like so much of what I do is just about me and my brand and whether it's dancers doing it or me doing it. And it's like, I, there's no other person that's trying to take my vision and change it. You know what I mean? So like when it's an I expression of it's you expression of me, a hundred percent, there's no one else in here telling in my ear, you should do this. You should do that. We should film it this way. It's all me. So being able like just on my funeral, I just want those like videos to play. I would just love that. And just people can feel it and it'll, and you know, that's the thing about art. It's, it's timeless, you know, it just it lives forever. So you can live on through the work. Yeah. 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 So human wise that, and then artistic wise, that, oh, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. That is such a beautiful thing as an artist. I feel the same way. That's why I wanted to do these podcasts. I was imagining like, you know, one day when I'm dead, hopefully it's a long time from now, you know? <laughs> or when hope. I have kids even, you know? Yeah. I want them to look at this and see, wow, yes. this is what my dad was talking about in his mm -hmm. 30s or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a nice way to capture a moment. I want to share. Yeah. I, want, I don't want to die before I've given all that I can give. Yeah. You know, I feel like I have so much I want to create. Like, yeah. even if I die when I'm 100, I want to be halfway through a project. Yeah, There right? should be some unfinished thing. Yes, I love you that. You know, when I transition. Like, oh, oh wow. he was just in the studio last week. <laughs> wow, that's right? cool. Yeah. I have so much I want to give and yeah. create. Mm -hmm. But I would love to, I think my biggest fear is just not doing everything that I want to do with my career in terms of career. Um, you know, I want to see my 
choreography on a stage you know I want I want to see that I've, I've loved I love doing what I do I love traveling the world I love you know doing these viral videos and stuff like that but I, I really want to still see my choreo on a stage and let an artist let me really do what I want and actually you know Mario I just did his um headlining performance for Millennium Tour and that was kind of like the first time really that I got to do a full like performance that was just me and me and him were working together so that was really cool and I just want to have more moments like that that I can really just like do what I do on a bigger stage with a bigger budget you know <laughs> shit like that <laughs> so um yeah that's probably my biggest fear quote unquote but also it's I'm like, very easy going yeah I will just anything whatever life whatever life thinks I should do I will always do it to the fullest and I will enjoy it so I feel you. Yeah. I'm the same way. I, I just, I want to live all that I can live. Yeah. And experience it all and create it all. Yeah. Right. It's just, I, I would say my fears are more about missing out. Yeah. Right. And not just on work. Sometimes like today, uh, uh, Yanni and I spent an hour on the porch watching the rain. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't miss that moment. Yeah. Imagine if it was raining all day and I was just locked in the studio editing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Life. So it's just understanding, yeah, too. what is it that I want to, what's worth my attention? True. Right. Sometimes I don't want to miss out on a project, but mm -hmm. other times I don't want to miss out on the life. rain, on life. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is. No, I feel that. Yeah. I, you know, what's funny is I was kind of, when you asked me that question too, I was like, I was thinking about like regular life as well. The husband, marriage, family type thing and i actually think i have found my partner now so i'm happy about that which Yay. i'm very blessed yes um but that was a that was a fear of mine for a while of like not being able to find my person that i will have a whole family with and you know i still want that traditional side you know i feel like my my life is so up and down so variety driven and it's like i'd still wanted that that solid family life you know and i'm hoping you want kids one day i do i do i want to have that and you know in this industry in hollywood in general i think we all we all kind of see that family life later in mm -hmm. life than like you know straight out of college or whatever you know for right the average person i guess so that was kind of a fear of mine for a while but um yeah i think it's gonna happen so <laughs> <laughs> i'm happy now <laughs> And you said earlier, not to be so deep on all this, but oh, you yeah. said, what's your belief about death and God? Death and like God. Like what happens after you die? And do you believe in God? So um, just from books that I've read and stuff like that, um, I believe that I kind of feel like our lives on earth just kind of keep happening and happening until we're whole. So I think that this is kind of, I, I look at earth as in our life as school and uh, we're put into different lives. I do believe in like reincarnation, um, but reincarnation is interesting because when you pull us out of earth, time doesn't exist. So we're kind of living all of these lives at the same time. Right. Mm. And through all these different lives, we are just trying to become our whole self. And I don't know what happens after that whole self. I don't know if it's we become an angel, we're with God. I don't know if it's because we become an alien and that's like where we are in the future is, you know, our getting our full consciousness back. I don't know what it is, but I just believe that and when we die, we keep living over and over in different lives until we can become full, you know, in this life. I'm trying to still, I feel like each life is like a lesson, right? Like even when it comes down to like zodiacs, like you were placed like in this time with the stars aligned like this. So you have these behaviors, you know what I mean? I'm like, well, there was someone, we were put here precisely like to get through that. And maybe in this life, me being a Scorpio, I have to go through these transformational things to help me get another piece of the pie I don't know if this is making sense, but um, yeah, I just feel like every life is just trying to make us whole again. And every life is like a piece of a pie that we're like getting together. Does that make sense? It does. What okay. Do your parents does that think sound about crazy? This? No, no. Okay. Have you told this to your mom and dad? I, I hope I don't sound crazy right now. Oh my God. <laughs> no, no. I, I followed okay, what you okay. were saying. I right. completely okay, followed okay, what okay, you're okay, saying. Good, good, good. Uh, um, what were you saying? My, my dad and my mom? What do your parents think about that? Uh, Have you told really, them that no, perspective? No. I mean, I be, I'm, Like you if know, they see this interview, is that going to be their, this, their, their first time probably, hearing you say yeah, that? Probably, yeah. What do they think you believe? Um, you know, I, I went to a Catholic private school oh, when right. I was young. Are they um, still Catholic? Uh, Ish. I think, they're, I think it was more about the private school. I mean, my mom is Catholic, but, you know, we don't, we don't really follow it. I, I believe I'm more like Christian if you had to. I just believe in 
God. I believe in a God. And I think my mom and my dad do too. I don't know how much they believe into like, you know, all the things that go with the Bible and say, and with Catholic, you know, saints and all that stuff as well. Right. I don't know how precisely they believe in all that. I just know that our family in general believes in God and we want to be good people. And that's honestly like, as long as we're good people and we're doing what we're supposed to do and we're not hurting anyone else. And it's like, I think we all just kind of accept our family just kind of accepts whatever we believe. I so. feel that. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure I was baptized when I was a kid as well. And yeah. My mom believes in God and she's, and so does my dad. And she always says, Vai con Deus, like go with God. Yeah. But she doesn't force anything on us. Like we have, yes. I don't think we barely ever went to church, but she just always just says, just go be with God. Person. God's with you or yes. whatever. Yeah. 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 Be she a good person. Just, yeah. Just as like in a, a loving voice about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think that just that rule in general just covers everything, you know, and I don't know. I just, I, I, I can't imagine that there is not a higher power. You know what I mean? And no matter what that looks like to you, I just feel like as long as you kind of believe in something higher, you're going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. There's no design without a designer. Yeah. Well, yeah. and think about it. Like if you just live your life, if you don't have a higher power that you believe in, then what is stopping you from doing whatever the hell you want right now? If you just believe that you die and that's it, that's the end of the road, there's nothing else. Well, why can't, you go do whatever you want. Well, I would say then the pushback to that would be that people put that higher power as just a belief system without mm -hmm. thinking of it as God. They would just say, be a good person because quote unquote, the universe believes I should be a good person or whatever, right? I think people mm -hmm. still follow the North Star of let me be good. Mm -hmm. It's just that whether or not they believe that North Star is a God or that God specifically. There's a higher power, right? Right, maybe- Something the, higher. Though. The higher power I think, I think then comes out as just, their values are the higher power. Their values are the higher power. Because I, yeah, you know, because I don't know, it's weird. Because on one side, humans were so um, primal, mm -hmm. but we're also the capability Godless. to do so much good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we we could be very primal and we can mm -hmm. also be very loving. I think everybody has a I capability the, for both. And right? that's the duality of, I think, us, you know, is like earthly versus godly, you know? And I don't know, I just feel like for to believe in a higher power is to just be on a better path, you know, than doing things just in this time right now for what, you know, it's, it's kind of like, okay, I can either backstab this person and make more money or I can not do that and not make more money, but I'm not going to hurt this person. I think earthly wise, if you're just thinking about right now and when you're going to backstab this person, cause it's what you want and you're right now and there's nothing there's no higher power that's going to be, I don't want to say judging, but there's no other right. higher power to ask for. Whereas when you look at it from a higher power, whether that's God or Jesus or whatever, you know, universe, whatever it is, you're going to end up doing the right thing because of that higher power and that kind yeah, of the loving. desire to want to be the yeah. ideal best version. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Ooh. even in, in the energetic work I've been reading, right, just about mm -hmm. the different states that we can be in, mm. when I do good things, it's because I'm vibrating in a good frequency. Yes right mm -hmm. and usually when i mess up is when i'm not vibrating a low frequency so i try to understand why am i vibrating a low frequency am, am i not getting enough sleep mm -hmm. am i no working nature. too much am mm -hmm. i disconnected from nature or fa family mm -hmm. do i have some depression i'm not dealing with right yeah. have i do i need to go talk to my therapist again or whatever right there's always some like most of the times i've messed up in my career have been because i've been in tumultuous relationships there's like some argument going on with a girlfriend or something like that yeah and then the home life is very emotionally rough mm -hmm. and then I like forget to deliver a video on time and mm. then it's late or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the times I've messed up has been because I'm not in a state of peace, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So that's why now I try to focus a lot on cultivating a good state. Yes. Because when I'm in a good state, good things happen. Yeah. When I'm in a bad state, I'm less resourceful, right? Of and course. I try to have that mindset for other people too in grace, right? That even with somebody, obviously, even if somebody comes in here like trying to kill me or something, right? I would defend myself. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I believe that I don't think no baby is born a killer. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like every terrorist thinks they're the good guy. Yes. From their and perspective. That's what's right? And that's so the crazy part, right? Crazy. Everybody feels yeah. justified. So I just yeah. try, as long as somebody's not directly hurting me, I try to give grace to say, okay, you know, I, I've had people steal from me and, and do bad things to me. <laughs> and, and, and I think, okay, well, technically they're losing out because they're not getting to vibrate at their highest frequency. Right? Like if somebody is yes. backstabbing me, 
even though I may be hurt in the moment, they're yes. also hurting themselves because they're not feeling the good feeling of being a contributor. And karma, right? Right. Like, I, and I think yeah, that goes along that. with karma as well. Yeah. It's like when you put out that vi bad vibration, you're going to get that bad vibration back. And if you're constantly putting that out and the more intense it is, the more intense you're going to get it back. And dude, you just hit it on the nail with people that have done bad things and like it's so interesting because like you said in that moment you're like feeling horrible but in the long run who actually who actually wins who actually who actually works it's the person that is vi like you said vibrating higher and doing good choices and doing this stuff yeah. even if you have that low dip you're going to come out of it because you're keep on putting that good vibration out you're going to keep getting it back and, and even if you feel justified right not to yeah. cut you off but like i remember there's been times where i've had like business partners completely like screw me over mm -hmm. and then i say okay i could spend <laughs> the next year of my life trying to sue them yes <laughs> right uh, yeah and take right? them down and do all this and stuff be so and vengeful try to, because yep. it's like i can't believe this happened yes. to me and, da, 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 da. and even though so. i would be justified i would be justified to go after somebody it, it would be hurting Don't me go down to, that to be vibrating that negatively mm -hmm. and then i wouldn't be creating anything yeah it takes time and money and, and emotional capital mental capital so it's like okay it, i'd rather them hurt me for one day yes than hurt me for a year thank right? you right so if they've already hurt me for that day then why am I letting them continue to hurt me for the year? I need to find a way to just let me go create. Let it I've go. started over so many times, Nicole. Like I've had so many times where I've had money and I've lost it all. Yeah. Went back to the studio apartment. Started. Sheesh. It's happened so many times that now I say I'll, I'll be okay. Yeah. Yes. I'll be okay. That That is yeah. one thing that I am proud to say I have never lost in yeah. this industry is l l putting myself down to someone else's level. Mm. Like I, the things I have been through and the things people have said about me the things that people have tried to make me out to be in my career like i have never gone down to their level and done the same thing that they've done to me you know what i mean and right. with that i feel like i continue to push forward and and rise above and keep going you know and i, I it's like you're there are so and it, i feel like it's a test i feel like it's also the devil testing you you know it's like oh mm -hmm. this happened how are you gonna react right how are you, are you gonna, gonna react vengeful? brazil how are you right. gonna react you know right. and it's like Oh, okay, that sucked. And, you know, maybe I had a dark moment there, but you're not going to get the better of me. I'm not, you're not bringing me down to that level. I'm not about that. I'm going to keep up here and my life is going to, it's going to show that, you know? Yeah. And generally speaking, when, even when somebody does something bad to me, um, I try not to think of them as an evil person. No, it's just. Because I've had messed up happen to me since I was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. I was abused as a kid. I've been beat up by the cops. I've had all kinds of crazy shit happen, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I think people have done evil things, but I try not to look at them as they are evil, yeah. right? It's you know, They were vibrating at a very low frequency and I want to stay away from them. I want to mm -hmm. have boundaries from them, Yeah. right? But I try to give grace and, and, I, and I try to, in, in my best day, it <laughs> yeah. yeah. doesn't always happen. In my best day, if somebody hurts me, I try to imagine, I would like to think I do this. Maybe I just like saying I do it, but <laughs> I think I do this yeah. as I say, if they're hurting me, it's because they're, they're not feeling good. Mm -hmm. Nobody hurt who people, feels hurt great. I imagine if you just had the best day ever. You're like, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. Would you go around hurting people? Oh, it's the same. No. I think about that all the right. time with social media when people like leave bad comments and stuff. It's like good, happy people aren't leaving negative comments. You know, hurt people yeah. are leaving hurt comments. Yeah. Yeah. Because even if, even if I watch a video and I want to say something bad about it, I don't take the time to write the comment. No. I'd have to be feeling so don't shitty to that. express it in a comment. Exactly. Yeah. No. And yeah. maybe that's because a lot of people don't have outlets to express themselves, which is why dancing is so cool or like skating or martial arts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Use your body. Mm -hmm. Like Tony Robbins says, emotions yeah. created by motion. Yeah. So many people were just stuck at home or in their office, like not moving at all, yeah. not getting a massage, not stretching, not mm -hmm. working out, not f using their energy. That then it all gets channeled into, well, I hate this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not getting outside. Like, They're not making real connections, like all that stuff. When I do I have a nice workout and a delicious meal and a great stretch. Yeah. And a You're massage <laughs> and a gratitude session. It's just like, yeah. oh, okay. okay. Yeah. If I don't like that video. Yeah. Right. Plugged into Whatever. the matrix either. Yeah. Yeah. 24 seven, which is a That's what I got to work on. I'm so addicted to my phone. Um, <laughs> we all I made are. a new rule with Yanni. I said, I, at this point, I can't even have my phone in the bedroom anymore. Oh. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. Is I just is look right up. to it. Yeah. Right to like some super stimulating yeah. current news stuff. Yeah. I have to keep it to where I, I have to walk away from it. Like, 
Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't check my shit too much during the day, but it's definitely like That's at amazing. night or in the morning. Yeah, I'm kind of too busy like either with work or or just life, like living life that I don't look at it during the day, but it's like getting in bed at night on the phone and then waking up in the morning on the phone till i have to get up like that's when i do the worst so i gotta get well at least you have too. the day when i'm filming yes, i don't check that's it why i don't but... trip too much about it i'm like uh, trying not to judge myself too much about it because i'm like ah, at least i'm not on it all day like i used to be right yeah. well that's good yeah yeah like whenever i'm on set doing stuff like that yeah. it's hard to check your phone but yeah. most of my days i'm just at home yeah in my pajamas <laughs> on the computer working so there's yeah. always an excuse to have a podcast on in the background or something but, oh wait i i do stuff like that I like yeah. watch pop, but that's not, I don't think that's aimlessly scrolling. I think if you're watching yeah. stuff that's stimulating, like, I think True. that's okay. I mean, maybe. It is. I mean, I just do it too all much. day. All day, every day. <laughs> yeah. All day. Are you learning stuff, <laughs> though? I think I am. Yeah. But I'm also stuff. just not letting my mind just take a like, break take for a, a break second and just, and just be yeah, silent. Me. That's why I enjoyed watching the rain today. Yeah. Was, we didn't take videos Ooh. of it. It was just like, no, you we're just, just there. just and watched. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. All right. What are your goals for the next year? Goals for the next year. Um, I want to create more um, structured pieces with choreography. Uh, now that I have my own studio now. Yay. Congratulations. So, thank you. The Kitty Compound, right? The Kitty Compound, yes. Well, it's called the studio is called The Compound, so it's gender fluid, you know, okay. but the Kitty Compound is the brand, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so now that I have my own studio, I really just want to get a little bit more creative, kind of step away from just the normal class combos and just like have, you know, dancers come and we can create more interesting pieces so that's kind of what i want to do and then okay there's one and then kitty compound i want to grow that you know just make a i just want to make a platform for everything f everything feminine yeah right. everything feminine energy whether gay straight doesn't matter female male doesn't matter just come in you can find anything that's like f anything involving feminine femininity it'll be there so i want to grow that um keep working in the industry and uh yeah, just help my relationships as well. Stay, stay family, you know, connected to my family and work on my relationship. Keep my, I want to do something with my sister too. Me and my sister are going to start working together. So that's awesome. Yeah. Creating a family type business will be nice. Yeah. That's great. I'm yeah. glad that you found your lane and you created your own, your own brand. Yeah. Thank you. Your own you. studio. You yeah. know, that's, that's a path of freedom. It is, man. It is. I, 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 I'm so happy and grateful to have my own thing that I am in charge of. Like as much as I would love to, you know, work in the industry more and stuff like that, like being able to be your own boss is so rewarding. There's nothing it like is. it. It is. I, I could never go back. Yeah. I could never go never. back. That's Me why either. now I got the Naughty Girl thing with Janelle. We got that Amazing. going. Just yeah. bought a bunch of equipment and have my podcast. It's like I barely even want to do music videos Dude, anymore. Yeah. Unless it's like for like an artist that I love. Yeah. And there will always be those moments that, you know, you which in that do. case, I'll do it for free. You're right. You know, but you're and then you have the freedom to do that. Yes. You're not you're not a slave to other people's time and other people's brands and other people's businesses. Right. You're your own. And then you, you can, can take on jobs you only want to do. And it, the dollar sign doesn't mean anything. Exactly. Oh, getting to that point felt so good. Yeah. I feel <laughs> you because I'm there, too. Cheers to that. High five. <laughs> mm. um, so you rewarding. read any good books this year? Read any bo books this year. I um, Atomic Habits yeah. kind of was in and out. I, you know what? I go through these things with my years where I swear it's the same thing. Like I, I read a lot in one year and then the next year it's all action. And I'm yes. in my action year. This, Just I, applying I'm what getting, you learned. Yes, yeah. I'm in my action. Uh, this Or I should say this last year was my action. So I think next year I really want to get into reading again. Um, starting my, I have like a morning routine that I like am so heavy on. Tell me it, about it. My morning routine? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let me think if I can... It's a long morning routine. Tell like me. Like when I'm doing everything. I wake up. I say hi to Nilla. That's my dog. Gotta have my time with Nilla. Then I feed her and then I get ready and I go work out. When I get back, I meditate or I stretch. I meditate. And then that's when I um, go through... Like I do my emails first. So I try to get my emails out the way because those are always like piling up. Then I like to um, read and then I like to study. So sometimes they go hand in hand, but reading is just like whatever. And then studying is, um, I want to know more about like 
film direction and writing and stuff like that. And then I want to learn my language. I'm still working on French. So I want to do like 10 minutes of French. And then um, I'm writing something right now that I'm working on. Actually, that's another goal that I didn't mention, but I'm writing something right now. So I'd want to do every morning, you know, even if it's just 15 minutes working on that. And then how does it end? I think that's, is that everything? Yeah, reading, studying, writing, French. Those are the four things that I wanted to do every morning. Yeah, I think that's it. That's Plus awesome. Out, How long yeah. have you been consistently doing this? Is it consistent? So I was so good the beginning of this year. And then as soon as traveling started, like spring, yeah. it, traveling throws everything off everything off like my sleep everything is a mess so as soon as i started traveling it definitely fluctuated you know and sometimes i was on it for a week then i would travel for another three weeks and it's just like on and off just trying to get my sleep schedule together but this next year too I, i'm gonna cut back a little bit on the traveling so much too that's why i created kitty compound so hopefully i can yeah. reach people without having to always physically be there you know so but it's nice for me to hear you say yeah. that you also even when you make a morning routine so struggle to do it yeah i'm the same way too i feel like i do the right stuff most of the time most of the time some mm -hmm. of the times at least yeah. <laughs> you know you know yeah we're not perfect uh -huh. you know and and sometimes like even right now now that it's like getting into winter again and like the nights are getting darker i always get tired during this time of year mm. i always get tired i never i it's like it's hard for me to do stuff it's hard for me to to just mm. commit to things more mm. and i usually get angry at myself for 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 feeling like that and not i'm being easier on myself like good for you you know I'm, I'm gonna be easy like it's okay if you need a break take a fucking break and enjoy it because guess what when you take a break because i'm gonna take a break regardless yeah. and i'm gonna be hating myself the whole time and then i'm only gonna take half a break because the whole time i'm gonna be in my head like i should be doing something i should be doing something you know what i mean mm -hmm. trying to be easier on myself like relax if you want a fucking break take a break enjoy it and then when you get back i'm going to be feel so much more refreshed than i would have if i would have been like beating myself up the whole time about it yeah you know? not have resistance towards it yeah yeah, yeah. sometimes it's like i feel like i should be working i should be working and then you end but up just i need sitting to rest there. but i don't really rest either because i'm resting thinking about work mm -hmm. it's not even a real it's rest it's not even a real rest it's a half rest yeah. exactly so I'm trying to be easier on myself this year too and just i think being easier on myself is going to make me feel better to actually if I get off my morning routine to get back on it. But you know, January, February, March, my morning routine is good. And then it's like, <laughs> that's when the traveling, that's when the craziness, you know, starts happening. So this year I'm gonna push through a little bit more, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming through and, and, and sharing the vibe for a bit. Thank you. Thanks um, for having me. Of course. So Congrats why don't we... on this whole thing. This, uh, these podcasts are killing it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I enjoy having the conversations. They're really more for me. I'm surprised anybody's even listening. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like but you apparently people it? like it. You hey. know, these are, I like these conversations. Yeah. There. And this is, this is the first, or not, I shouldn't say interview, podcast, conversation, whatever. Yeah. It's different. It's different questions than what I'm usually asked. So it's cool. Oh. Got to talk about, to talk about over here. I mentioned aliens and freaking <laughs> reincarnation and all this stuff. I've never talked about that before. So thank you for leading a great convo. Of course. Yeah. Um, last but not least. What are three things that you're grateful for right now? And you can take a moment if you want to breathe on it. But I'll just breathe on it just so I can pick really strong ones because I actually do this every morning and yeah. hopefully every night. Yeah. But I'm going to say three things I'm grateful for. And they don't have to be big things, just things that you feel. Yeah. Health always, you know, after having so many health issues, health is always number one. So I'm so thankful for my health. Um, oh, right, because you d dealt with the whole cancer thing. Cancer, yeah, that shit will... That's a whole other chapter. A whole other thing. I yeah, have a, quite a story here. Um, yeah, health for sure. Health is always number one. Two, I really want to say my family, just because, you know, the older we get, you know, they're not always going to be here, you know? And I think the older I get, the more that reality sets in with, like, my parents and uncles you know grandparents well grandparents are gone but uncles and aunts and stuff like that so family just like being so thankful that i have been able to reach 32 and have my parents and my sister with me the whole time i'm so grateful for that mm. um and then the third thing i'm just gonna say i'm gonna say where i'm at right now um with everything that I've, I'm going to say experience. I'm going to say I'm grateful for my experiences. So, you know, I feel like so many people um, work nine to fives for 30, 40 years just to go on 
one or two trips that I've been able to experience, you know, and I've gotten to travel the world and do so many amazing things with my life. And I'm just super thankful for my experiences. Yeah. That's the things I would say. Those are the three things I would say. Yeah. Well, Nicole, I've always thought you, you were a beautiful person. Thanks. Great, great soul. Um, <laughs> I've, always, I've always known you to be a good person. Any interaction I've had with you has been positive. And I know that you mean well and that you're out here creating stuff that feels good to you mm-hmm. and to other people as well. Yes. So I just wanted to give you your flowers. Oh, thank you. And, um, and I wish you all the best, seriously. I'm so happy to see all of it growing. I think it's just the beginning. It's just phase one it of is. this whole thing. It, it really is. And I feel the same for you. Again, congrats on all of this. And um, yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Cheers. Yay! Yay.